If you are just setting up your high level account, one of the most important steps to take is to connect your Mailgun account so that you can deliver emails through the high level system, whether that is an automated email or an independent manual email to a lead, prospect, or client. There are several steps that you'll need to take in order to get this done, so pay attention and follow along closely. Pause the video and go through these steps as I go through them with you for the best possible results. Ultimately, what you see and some of the steps you may take are going to be dependent on where your domain is hosted. So we are using GoDaddy as the example today. A lot of people use GoDaddy, but if you are using a different domain hosting company, you need to first have the login information for that domain host. You also need to be willing to reach out to their support if you run into any issues along the way as they will be able to help you and check on some of these DNS settings as you are adding them and trying to validate them. So again, make sure that you've got your domain host and access to your DNS settings. So if you are on someone else's account, first check that you have access to those DNS settings as typically only the administrator would. And if you do, then you are good to start going through this process of connecting Mailgun to high level. Let's go ahead and dive in. The very first step is to create a Mailgun account. You can visit mailgun.com and you will be on this screen. You'll click the get started button and then you're going to enter your details as well as your card details and create account. It is going to ask you to verify that account through email so make sure you do that right away and then you will be redirected to the home page of your Mailgun account. Once I've verified my account, I will be logged into my dashboard the next time I log in. We're going to navigate to the sending tab and we will be on the domains tab and we will then click add new domain. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new domain and I am going to say mailgun dot whatever my domain name is that I'm going to be using for Mailgun delivery. I'm gonna go ahead and hit add domain. So it says it successfully created the domain. And then now we are going to see the records that we're going to need to add into our DNS settings. So on the left-hand side, it's gonna tell you the type of record. For instance, a TXT record, an MX record, or a CNAME record. So three different types of records to add. We'll also see host names and values. On the values, you're simply going to use this little copy button to copy those as we paste them in. Once you're inside of your domain host, which in this example is GoDaddy, you'll navigate to the domain that you would like to use, click on that domain, and scroll down to the Manage DNS button. Before we dive in and talk about the individual records, you simply need to know how to add a record. So when you are on that DNS records page, you should see a button that says add. The first option will be the type. You are going to choose the type of record that Mailgun is giving you, such as MX, TXT, or CNAME. The only difference between them is going to be on the MX record where you will have a field for priority, which the priority for both MX records will be 10, as it will show you in Mailgun, which we'll go over in just a minute, but everything else is gonna have a name, which is your host name, and the value which Mailgun provides to you. For TTL, you can leave that as default, then you will click Add Record, and that is the process you're gonna to use to add all of these records into your DNS settings. So the way that these are added into your DNS settings can potentially be a little bit confusing. So we're gonna take a look at each record and how they're ultimately entered into your DNS. So if we hop over here, the first one that we are gonna take a look at is that text 
record. So the very first text record is mailgun.gtheory.college. So the domain itself is gtheory.college. So instead of adding the entire host name, mailgun.gtheory.college, we ultimately just needed to add the word mailgun because the host name is already gtheory.college. All we're doing is adding the mailgun aspect to that record. The next one that we'll take a look at is the second text record. So krs dot underscore domain key dot mailgun dot gtheory dot college. So ultimately, all we did was add krs dot underscore domain key dot mailgun because again, the gtheory dot college is already a part of the host name, so we don't need to add that part. We're now going to create the C name record. I'm skipping over the MX records for a reason, but we will come right back to them. So just realize again, you do not need to add your actual domain name in that value. So let's take a look at how that looks inside your DNS settings. As you can see right here, I've added that C name and instead of email dot mailgun dot gtheory dot college. It's just email dot mailgun with that value of mailgun dot org that they provided to us. So again, anytime you see your domain name in those records, you do not necessarily need to add that into the host name field. However, again, like I said in the beginning, this is different based on the domain host that you are using. So I would make sure to check with support again, if you have any issues with validating your domains or adding these DNS records correctly. The next two records are MX records, mailgun.gtheory.college is the host name for both. And then one is just A and one is B in these values that we're adding. The C name record is actually creating these subdomains. Because of that, the MX records can simply have that at sign in the host name because mailgun will already be created as a subdomain of your regular domain. So I know that's confusing, but this CNAME record, when you're adding it, it's ultimately creating these subdomains. Therefore, the MX records do not have to have anything in that host name other than the at sign. And then finally, we're going to try and verify this, but it can take 24 to 48 hours for those changes to actually go into effect. So if you try and verify and it does not verify, don't freak out. You just need to wait that allotted period of time and try again. So it took about 48 hours to get these changes to propagate. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's very, very quick. Sometimes it is not. However, we do now see that green check mark saying that this domain is verified. Now we can move through the rest of the steps in connecting your Mailgun account. Now we are going to grab our API keys and add them into our high level account. We'll do that by logging in, going to the dashboard, and then we are going to see our API keys button. This is going to be towards the bottom on the right hand side. Once I click on API keys, it will bring up this page where I'll have a private API key and a public validation key. I can click on this little I icon to show me the entire key, and I'm going to copy and paste those into the appropriate areas inside of my high level account. Inside of high level, I'll need to navigate to the agency dashboard. You will see a button at the top right hand side with two arrows on it. That's how you can navigate to the agency dashboard. You're going to click on settings. Once you do that, you will see the mailgun tab you want to click on that edit button. You're going to paste that API key and then you should see your domain inside of that drop down so that you can click on add connection. Then your domain and your mailgun account should be connected to high level.
Once we've added that, we're then just going to go over to the SMTP service tab located right next to the Mailgun tab in your agency dashboard settings. We will click add service. On select provider, we are going to select other, provider name, Mailgun. And now we're going to plug in those values provided to us from Mailgun. Now that our domain is verified, when you click on that domain, you will no longer see those records. You will see something different. So I'll show you what that will look like here. You are going to see this SMTP button. In order to get your credentials, you will need to select this SMTP TP, and it will provide you credentials directly from Mailgun. My host name, I'm going to copy that. Now my port number is 587. My username I'll plug that in here. default password, and then we will plug in our email address here and then hit save. And then we should see our Mailgun provider with our domain right there. We'll then be able to utilize it in any of our sub accounts. So now I have navigated inside of my sub account, and if I click on SMTP and Mailgun service, I should see Mailgun as my default provider with my email or domain in there, and that is how I know that I am good to go. The next step is simply to send yourself a test email and make sure that that goes through. You can do that directly through the Conversations tab. If that email does go through and sends to your email address, Everything has been set up correctly and Mailgun is now fully integrated into your high level account. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button, comment if you have questions, or hit subscribe to make sure you never miss a video on high level Facebook ads, small business marketing, and more.